Um, sorry for all the Windows things, but um, hi, folks. Thanks for sticking around. It's four. Um, I hope you had a great day. I did. Um, I'm going to talk for 15 minutes about Meprolet. Who is here has uh, heard about Meprolet before? Um, who has used it? Uh, who has created tasks with it? OK, cool. It's a, it's a good amount of people. Thank you for, for that. Um, I have a session tomorrow that's a bit longer uh, that is go, go, going into a lot more detail about how to create your own tasks and challenges. This is going to be much higher level. I'm going to talk about um, the feedback that we've had over the years. This project has been running for 12 years. Uh, some of the cool challenges that people have created, and then sort of a little high-level overview of how you can start um, your own challenges. Oh, this work, the arrows still work. That's good. Uh, so just to go over real quick what MapRoulette is, it's a, it's a web application um, to share and solve small OSM mapping tasks. And by small, I mean like not edit this entire city, but uh, edit this particular intersection or edit this trail. Um, so it's, it's meant to be really small tasks, so to encourage people to do a lot of them. Uh, everyone is a creator, so everyone can not only solve tasks, but also create them. Um, it has some really powerful coordination tools for, for local communities, but also for larger organizations who want to use MapRoulette for their um, QA processes. Uh, some numbers real quick, like we had 12 years of operation now. Uh, we've had two major versions, um, but about 337 total releases uh, over the years. Um, this month alone, which is just a few days old, we have 10,000 change sets that are attributed to MapRoulette and 242,000 since the beginning of the year and the 613,000 last year. And that's just the ones that I know of because like there's not really a, this is just based on hashtags, right, in the change sets. Uh, so let's go over some mapper feedback that we got over the years. So um, 2013, um, this project just got just gotten started, and people really wanted to make their own challenges. So we implemented a wizard uh, that lets you do just that, and that is still around, so you can still use that. Also, we started writing uh, really extensive documentation and online tutorials, and we started publishing talks that were recorded like this one over the years. So we now have a very extensive documentation website that everybody can use to help them. Um, a few years later, um, now we have a ton of challenges, but they're hard to find. So we overhauled the entire system to let people search and filter uh, challenges to narrow down um, what they, what they want to work on. Also, you can browse the map of all the many millions of tasks that are in there um, to find uh, something that you want to work on. Uh, so ne ne next problem <laughs> that people talk to me about is, look, well, Lambda has so many tasks, I just want to work on the ones that are close to me. So we introduced some tools for that. Now you can do a virtual challenge. You can draw a little box or uh, a, a figure uh, around the tasks that you want to work on, and then uh, you would get just those tasks. Um, and a few other things that help you get a more local um, orientation. Um, also around that time, uh, people really started really wanting to use MapRoulette in their own language instead of just English, and we opened this project on TransFX. Anyone can help translate the project, and we now have 28 languages. Not all of them are as complete, and please, if you speak more than one language, please help, or another language than English, please help out. Uh, this is open to anyone uh, to contribute. And we also started, uh, started um, localizing the documentation itself now. Um, this was pretty much inevitable. Uh, people were starting to complain about edits made with MapRoulette, um, and people were causing, were calling for MapRoulette to be banned. Um, so that happens. Any tool you create in the OSM ecosystem that lets you touch data, um, there's going to be people who want to ban it. But we in, we introduced, we took the message, and we introduced a lot of tools to help people do the right thing when they create tasks. Recently, we added a. Um, a checkbox at the bottom when you create a challenge through the wizard to acknowledge that you have read or that you're aware of the best ma mapping practices that OSM has and your responsibility as a, as a creator of these tasks. Trust is always our main priority of the project, so people need to be able to trust us, otherwise they're not going to be able to um, want to do these tasks. Uh, last thing uh, that's very recent, and I think uh, Brian and Ben from, from the Rapid team have, uh, are talking about this maybe right now, 
um, that you can see MapRoulette Map tasks from within Rapid, and uh, that's the that's the the uh, Meta's version of the ID editor that has all this um, all these uh, suggested edits integrated into it. But you, now you can also see MapRoulette tasks right as you edit, um, and the other way around as well. MapRoulette has an integrated version of the editor, so you don't have to switch between tabs. So that's some of the feedback that we've received over the years. Um, now I want to talk about like how can you make this work for your community, right? Everybody has their local. It, it can be a, a local community based on around your city, your province, your town, um, your campus. Uh, it can also be an, a community of specific interests. It doesn't have to be a geographically localized community. It can also be like I love rock climbing and I want all the rock climbing in OSM. Um, I want all the public monuments or sculptures in OSM. So you can work with that to make MapRoulette work and, and create community around that. So I'm going to give a few examples first. Uh, so I'm going to give three examples of, 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 of uh, challenges that people have created that I had nothing to do with, but I just found really interesting. Uh, one of them was um, someone started to look at all the w URLs that were added to businesses in OSM and started writing some bot or crawler that, that would go through all these URLs and return a result if, there is, if, the, if the website no longer existed. And based on that, it was like, okay, why don't we update all these broken websites? Uh, either the business is no longer there, it's probably the most likely scenario, or the website needs to be updated. Um, so that was, I think, a few, good few thousand tasks in, I don't know if this was worldwide, but it was, I think it was in France. So you can do this for, this is just a query on OSM data, right? You can, I'll talk a little, a little bit about that later and tomorrow in a lot more detail. Um, another one that's found really interesting is spammy business descriptions. So there's this thing called um, SEO, search engine optimization. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nasty thing for the internet, but it's like uh, you can't avoid it everywhere. Um, it's basically shaping your content to make sure that it, is on the first page in Google, and it includes people, including all kinds of marketing lingo in the in the OSM business description. Uh, so someone went in and cr created a query that weeds out these potentially spammy descriptions and uh, and, and created MapRoulette tasks out of all of them to um, remove them or make them less spammy. Just a sec. Last one, um, so OSM has a lot of imported features, right? So things that, especially in the early days, people saw this nice public data set and was like, oh, we're gonna import all the things. Um, that was great, but also it led to a lot of things that we'd rather do differently today. So here's an example where uh, someone imported a whole bunch of uh, dams and reservoirs from public data here in the US. Uh, and all these reservoirs are tagged as, as nodes instead of nice, polygon features. So this challenge is about, well, here's a no one of those nodes. It's 15 years old. Um, and can you just kind of draw the actual reservoir and delete the node and copy over the tags? So it's all pretty useful stuff and very different depending on what you're interested in. So some people might be really interested in these reservoirs and they'll want to do these tasks. Other people really don't like the spammy business descriptions. So there's a, something for everyone is what I'm trying to say. And you can add to that. Um, corpus of MapRoulette tasks in any way you see fit. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about how, I, how, how you can do that. Um, so MapRoulette is organized in three levels. So there's tasks. Those are the little things that you can solve. Uh, then there's challenges. That's are the groups of tasks that have the same question, basically, that, uh, that, that has, uh, for example, solved the spammy business descriptions. Uh, that would be one challenge that has all these tasks. Then above that lives a layer of projects. So a project is a group of challenges that has to do with a certain, maybe a certain individual that wants to group their things. Some people use MapRoulette just to organize their own personal work. They never publish anything, which is have these MapRoulette challenges for, their, for themselves. It could be a local community. It could be, um, it could be uh, a, a mapping party. So you create this project. You can create as many as you want. And then uh, under each project, you can group all these challenges together. And once you create a project, you can give it a name. Uh, you can add other managers that can help you uh, create all the challenges and group them and keep, also keep track of how it's going, right? There's, 
uh, metrics um, about like how, how many tasks are being solved across all the challenges that are in the project. Um, so for the challenges themselves, again, I'm going to skip over a lot of detail because I just have 15 minutes. I now have five minutes, which is just enough time. <laughs> uh, but join my session tomorrow if you want to get into the nitty gritty of how you actually create these challenges. Um, I was going to talk about one thing that has annoyed me um, for a long time. I like to go out in remote areas and I find these mines, these old mine shafts. Uh, and someone has imported all these old mines from a data set and it's all wrong. Um, so most of these don't actually exist anymore. Um, in this case, you still see sort of a, a tunnel or an entrance uh, of the mine shaft. Uh, it was, in this case, it was, it was closed off by a metal grate. Um, because it's dangerous, these things collapse. Uh, but there were, most of the time there's nothing left, but there's all these nodes across the West and entire US was mostly the West. Um, so what you do is like you start, you devise this query in this language called overpass, which is basically a technical way to ask stuff of OSM. So, so show me all these old imported nodes. And I did that for Colorado. It's like, whoa, there's 6,500, that's a lot. Um, so if you do that in one challenge, you can do it, but it's also, going to be uh, very um, discouraging maybe for people to see so many tasks and okay, how are we gonna even start to make a dent in that? So I wanted to talk about the last couple minutes about sort of divide, divide and empower strategies in MapRoulette. Uh, so we use these projects to create all these smaller challenges. There's a couple of ways you can do that. Um, and I'm kind of just scratching the surface, but you can, uh, one thing I like to do is if you have a, a task with so many with so many, um, uh, challenge with so many tasks, and I, you can divide it up further by, uh, in this case, by county, for example. So you devise another query that, have, that gives you all the county boundaries, and then you start looking at all these counties and creating the challenges individually, and you end up with challenges at only a few hundred tasks. And then you can sort of divide, divide and empower um, uh, by, by small regions. And some of these counties will only have two or three, um, others will have maybe a few hundred, but it becomes much more manageable. And people who live there might care more about that specific place. Um, the other thing that I like to do, especially when you're sitting all together in a mapping party, is you just start drawing these virtual challenges, right? You have a little lasso tool on the map, and you can draw, you can, you can, you can say to your teammates, like, okay, I'm going to do this bit, and you're going to do that bit, and you can just draw a circle, or a, like it's actually um, sort of a free form uh, polygon, a lasso tool, you know, you, um, you can just kind of carve out a little section for yourself and then other people can carve out different sections. So you can sit together and carve out these different sections and sort of create these sort of challenges on the fly. Um, this is, I think it's a great tool for if you're all sitting together and you want to just divide and, uh, divide and empower. So once you've done that, um, and you put all this work into creating these challenges. And again, join me tomorrow <laughs> in the session <laughs> if you want to know, uh, the, if you want to know, uh, learn about all the details about doing that and the uh, querying and all that jazz. Um, but then if you, once you do all that, you've created, you're now ready to host your challenge. So you have this project page that is public um, and that everyone can go to and pick a challenge that they like um, and uh, start tracking. You can start tracking uh, the progress, completion progress. Um, there's comments that people can make about the tasks that you can see there as a feed. Um, so you have this powerful sort of dashboard that, that lets you see all, the, see all the things about your project as, as people work on it. Um, so you have, all, you have a lot of power to sort of organize in this, in this, um, in this tool, right? Um, yeah, and that's, I think that's all. I'm actually staying within time, so that's cool. Um, I, this is all I have for today. It's a really, really quick um, whirlwind overview of what MapRoulette can do, and it only scratches the surface, really. Um, but I'm here throughout the weekend to go into more specifics and help you out with your challenge. And um, I hope to see you tomorrow, some of you tomorrow if you're interested in creating some of these things yourselves. Thanks. <laughs>